All right, so we are talking about Drew, who is the landlord of an apartment building. Um, the two things that he is talking about here, so these are going to be our variables, um, and I always like to use X and Y, are going to be small apartments and large apartments. Those are the two things that um, Drew is looking into to building. So this is going to be, X is going to be in my small apartments, and then Y will be my large apartments. Okay, so now our constraints. Um, you cannot have a negative apartment. So our constraints, um, and these are kind of like standard for every single problem. Um, my x has to be greater than or equal to zero, and my y has to be greater than or equal to zero. So we're only talking about positive apartments, which kind of makes sense. Um, and then I have two other constraints, and I'm going to highlight the sentences where these happen. Um, so it's actually two sentences for my first one. So I'm going to highlight these two. So I'm going to actually read the second sentence first. It says, a small apartment fills one section, and a large apartment fills two sections. And then that first sentence says that there are 10 sections available of the floor. So 10 is kind of like my total. So that's going to be my number on the right side. Now what I have to do is multiply the amount of sections an apartment takes times how many apartments there will go are going to be. So I'm going to do 1 times x, and I really don't need to write the 1, but I am anyway, um, plus 2 times y. So this is telling me that each small apartment takes one section, and each large apartment takes two sections. And then he has 10 sections of floor to work with. So that means 10 is the maximum. He can't go over 10. He could use less than 10, but he can't use more. So I want to do less than or equal to 10. So he could use exactly 10, but not more. All right, so that's this yellow sentence here. And then I have my next sentence. It says, according to building code, he can have at most seven apartments of any size. So that means if I add the total number of apartments, um, it can't not be more than seven. It could be seven or less, but it can't be more than seven. So if I take x plus y, it has to be less than or equal to seven. So that represents that blue sentence there. All right, now the next sentence represents our objective function. Um, it says he charges $800 for rent for small apartments and $1,100 for rent for large apartments. So that's the money that he's going to be taking in. That's his profit um, for managing these apartments. So my objective function, since it's profit, I like to say P of XY, since I'm using two variables. And he's going to charge $800 for every small apartment plus 1,100 for every large apartment. So that purple equation there represents my objective function. All right, so now we have to graph. Um, the first two inequalities, these um, x greater than or equal to 0 and y greater than or equal to 0, um, those don't really have to get graphed. If we did, they would just be um, along the x and the y axis. And I don't want to draw on the x and y axis, otherwise we won't be able to see our numbers. So I'll come back to that. Um, so we're going to have to do some rearranging here. Um, so this equation here, or I'm sorry, this inequality, I'm going to rewrite it. Um, x plus 2y is less than or equal to 10. I need to get y by itself so that it's in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. And I have 2y, uh, sorry, less than or equal to um, negative x plus 10. And then I'm going to divide everything by 2. So I have y is less than or equal to. I think it's easier to understand if I write this as negative 1 half x, and then 10 divided by 2 is 5. So that's my first equation, or my first inequality, sorry. Um, and then I'm going to have to do the same thing with the one that's highlighted in blue. That one's going to be a little bit easier to solve. So I have x plus y less than or equal to 7. The only thing I need to do is subtract x from both sides. So my inequality will be y is less than or equal to negative x plus 7. All right, so now I'm going to graph um, all of these inequalities, and we'll see where our feasible region is, and that will tell us our critical points. So um, I'm going to graph the pink one first. So my y-intercept is 5, and then my slope is negative 1 half. So I'm going to go down 1 and right 2, and I'm going to keep doing this down 1, right 2, until I run out of graph, okay? Um, now my inequality has <clears throat> the bar underneath, so it's going to be a solid line. So there's my solid line, kind of. Um, and then for my shading, I want it to be everything underneath because it's less than. So I'm going to shade everything less than this line in yellow. 
okay? Now I'm going to do the line that I uh, solved in blue. So that one, my y-intercept is 7. So here's my y-intercept here, and then the slope is negative 1. So I'm going to go down 1, right 1, and I'm just going to keep going until I hit the, the x-axis. This one also has a solid line. Um, okay, and now I want to shade underneath this line because it, again, is less than. All right, now I said I was going to come back to um, those other constraints, the, the zeros. Um, I'm going to do those both in a light blue color. If I did x is greater than or equal to 0, that would be a vertical line like this, and I would shade everything to the right. And then if my y greater than or equal to 0 would be a horizontal line along the x-axis, and it would be everything above. So basically it just says we're talking about the first quadrant. Um, but what I really needed to figure out my feasible region um, is these uh, the blue and the red, the, the pink lines. Okay, so let's take a look at our critical points. So I can see that my feasible region, I'm going to kind of outline it in orange, looks kind of like this. And things got a little bit messy, but I want to really make sure that this, these critical points are clear. So I have four critical points. Uh, the first one is 0, 0. My next one is at 0, 5. Down here, uh, let's see, this looks like 7, 0. And then this one right here it looks like 4, 3. So those are my critical points, and I guess I could have just written them out here. 4, 3, and 7, 0. And now the last thing I need to do is test my critical points, and this is going to tell me my final answer. So I'm going to take my objective function, which is highlighted in green in that first box, and I'm going to plug in all of these x and y values and see which one gives me um, the biggest number because I'm looking to maximize profit. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is p of 0, 0. And this one is kind of silly because if you rent out zero apartments, you're going to make zero dollars. So that one is not going to be my answer because I would make zero dollars profit. Um, for the next one, let's see, um, 0, 5. So if I sold, or if I rented out zero small apartments and seven uh, large apartments, I would make $7,700. If I rented out four small apartments and three large apartments, it would give me a total of $6,500. And then last but not least, seven small apartments and zero large apartments. So that would be 800 times 7 and 1100 times 0 would give me a profit of 5600. So looks to me like our maximum profit would come right here if we rented out zero small apartments and five uh, large apartments. So that would be final answer. Um, you would want zero small apartments and five large apartments. Oops.